I think on the night of the explosion, we had coach staff out there as late as almost 11 o'clock at night, still fencing up a fairly large area uh, that needed to be secure. The role that we played there was primarily our nuisance abatement department that did a fantastic job on going out and securing the area uh, of the explosion uh, after it occurred. Um, and some folks might think, you know, well, what's the big deal with that? Well, if you saw some of the photos of the explosion, you quickly realized that there were a lot of dangerous conditions out there and that particular complex has a lot of children in it. So I think that the role that uh, code compliance played in conjunction with all the other um, you know, city services, whether it be, uh, I think it was Public Works who actually demoed the buildings, the, district, the, the damaged buildings. Uh, obviously DFR had a, few, a huge, huge part in, in trying to make something happen. We were able to get uh, slots for November 8th council session to take uh, the self-certification component uh, to our, our rental housing proposal. Uh, and also we will be taking the uh, habitual nuisance property uh, ordinance to the council on the 8th. So that's two items going on the 8th, one item going on uh, November 3rd. Um, and uh, beyond that, we're also looking at taking short-term rentals on November 15th to Quality Life, which would be kind of, kind of more the final proposal for short-term rentals. I've asked some people to jump out of their their scope to jump out of their comfort level. I think that the transition has gone well. Uh, I think it's gone much better than I expected. And as I see how people have adapted to this um, and being asked to do so much more, uh, nothing's fallen through the cracks.